one of our favorite places to cruise is Alaska. We've sailed there several times with a few different cruise lines. So to help individuals planning an Alaska cruise, we've put together this video where we share our 20 top tips you need to know about taking an Alaska cruise in 2022. Up next. Welcome aboard cruisers. I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you plan the perfect cruise vacation so you can see the world one port at a time. And one region that's on a lot of individuals' bucket list is Alaska. There's actually no better way to visit Alaska than on a cruise ship. So if you're investigating Alaska cruises or already have one booked and are beginning to plan your voyage, this video is for you as we share the must know Alaska cruise tips and tricks that will ensure smooth sailing for your cruise this year. Before we dive in, if you have any questions at all about planning Alaska cruise or what it's like to cruise in Alaska, leave them in the comment section below and we'll be sure to answer them. Now, if you're planning an Alaska cruise for 2022, there will be a few additional requirements. On the top of that list is vaccination. Right now, it looks like you will need to be vaccinated if you plan to take an Alaska cruise in 2022. While the specifics vary slightly by cruise line, eligible guests need to be fully vaccinated with an approved vaccine at least 14 days prior to sailing. Guests will also need to show proof of vaccination at the cruise terminal. Now, of course, the Alaska cruise season is a few months away, but we do see this requirement in place for the foreseeable future. But we wouldn't book an Alaska cruise right now if you're not vaccinated. Additionally, all cruise lines currently require a COVID test prior to boarding, regardless of vaccination status. While a few brands actually complete testing at the pier, most require guests to arrive with a negative test on embarkation day. For most cruise lines, a negative PCR or antigen test is required within two days of boarding the ship. This is for vaccinated guests. For unvaccinated guests, most brands now require a negative PCR test taken within 72 hours of departure. Similar to your vaccination status, you'll need to show proof of a negative test along with other boarding documents at the pier. We don't see the COVID-19 testing going away anytime soon. Now, technically, passports are not required for closed loop cruises, which are cruises that begin and end in the same US port. Thus, if you're cruising to Alaska round trip from Seattle, a birth certificate and government issued ID are the only forms of documentation you'll need. However, just because you don't need a passport to go on a cruise doesn't mean that you might not need one to enter one or more of the ports of call during your trip. For instance, you may need a passport for some Alaska cruise excursions. Shore excursions that visit Canada, like the White Pass Railway in Skagway, do require a passport to participate. Now, if your cruise is departing or returning to a foreign port, like Vancouver, British Columbia, then of course, you'll also need a passport for those voyages. So make sure you understand the itinerary you choose and these requirements. If you're in the planning stages of your Alaska cruise, do understand that Alaska cruises do cost more. So you're gonna wanna budget accordingly. If you've been on a Bahamas cruise or a Caribbean cruise, you'll find that Alaska cruise are a bit on the pricey side. Now the cruise costs fluctuate considerably depending on a few factors. The cruise line, cruise ship, the itinerary, and the time of year all weigh heavily on pricing. So there is a trade-off between saving money and the experience you'll have in Alaska. Alaska is a seasonal cruise port. This means that you're only able to cruise to Alaska during select months of the year. Typically, the Alaska cruise season runs from late April to early May through the end of September. If you're looking for the best weather, as well as the best possibility of wildlife sightings, then you're gonna wanna probably sail in midsummer. This time of year offers the best combination of average temperatures, rainfall amounts, hours of daylight, and wildlife sightings. But of course, this also means increased crowds and increased price. One of our expert Alaska cruise tips is to cruise during the shoulder season, which is the beginning or the end of Alaska cruise season. So April or May or September, October. This will save you money and you will avoid the crowds. We've cruised the region late in the season a few times now and have had a great Alaska cruise. However, do know that if you sail during these months, there is a possibility that some tours might not be running due to the weather. We have had some shore excursions canceled on us when sailing in September, but we always found alternative tours and were able to take advantage of some end of season deals at the gift shops. There are a lot of options to choose from for an Alaska cruise. Over a million individuals visit Alaska on a cruise ship each year. So finding the right Alaska cruise might seem like a challenge. There are family-friendly cruises to luxury end cruise lines, to even small ship adventure cruise lines. 
So there's no single best cruise line or best cruise ship in Alaska. Truthfully, it all depends on your travel party's preferences. The bigger brands like Norwegian Cruise Line and Royal Caribbean offer more diversity for multi-generational families on the vessels. These ships tend to be larger and have some of the newest and most innovative features and amenities. So these might be the best Alaska cruise picks for families. Carnival Cruise Line and Disney Cruise Line are also popular choices for family cruises to Alaska. Couples might want to consider cruise lines like Princess Cruises, Celebrity Cruises, or Holland America Line. These cruise lines offer several different styles of ships, which are smaller and tend to cater less to families. For luxury cruisers, we actually recommend Viking. While this trip might cost you more, it includes a shore excursion at each port of call, beer and wine at meals, free Wi-Fi, and no upcharges, especially dining. You can also find other boutique cruise lines that offer a more up-close and personal experience going to areas of Alaska that the larger ships can't. Cruise lines like Lindblad, Uncruise Adventures, and American Queen Voyages offer smaller ships with only a few hundred passengers or less that allows you to get up close and personal with the Alaska landscape and wilderness. Oftentimes we get asked, what's the best place to visit in Alaska? And that's a really tough question because there's so many different things to do and see at the different destinations. The good news is that there are several different itineraries you can pick from when cruising to Alaska so you can find the destinations and ports of call that interest you the most. The most common Alaska cruise itinerary you're going to find is a seven-day cruise, typically leaving from either Seattle, Washington or Vancouver, British Columbia. There are also one-way sailings that generally cruise from Seward or Whittier, Alaska to Vancouver and vice versa on northbound and southbound routes. Among the popular ports of call, on Alaskan cruise itineraries are Juneau, Ketchikan, and Skagway in Southeast Alaska, as well as Victoria, British Columbia. Some ships might also visit Sitka, Haines, or Icy Strait Point. Most cruise ships will also have at least one day where you'll see on the itinerary scenic cruising. This is time where you'll sail past majestic glaciers and fjords. If you're a first timer to Alaska, our expert cruise tip is to stick to a traditional seven day round trip cruise. If you can find one that sails through Glacier Bay National Park, we highly recommend it. The views there are amazing and the programming offered by the Park Service is also top notch. Whether or not you should get a balcony on Alaska cruise is also a hotly debated topic. It's true many cruise ships do offer plenty of outdoor open space for you to view glaciers or for scenic cruising during Alaska cruise. And most captains do a fine job of maneuvering the vessel so both sides of the ship get pretty good views of the shoreline. However, if you can swing it, one of our expert Alaska cruise tips is to upgrade to a balcony. There are many reasons to book a balcony on any cruise, but we find this splurge the most beneficial in Alaska. Now, I'll be honest, we used to only stay in inside cabins. And the first time we ever splurged for us on a balcony cabin was our first trip to Alaska in 2014. And now we're spoiled and we haven't sailed in an inside cabin since. Yes, we know, a balcony cabin will cost you more than an inside stateroom or an ocean view cabin. But having the extra interior space for your gear and luggage, as well as the ability to walk out on your balcony to admire the natural landscapes are well worth it for us. Now when traveling to Alaska, you do need to give yourself extra travel time getting there and should probably plan extra time getting back. This means arranging airfare as well as transportation and potentially pre or post hotel stays. For many individuals in the US, getting to either Seattle or if you're doing a one-way cruise at least from either Whittier, Alaska or Seward, Alaska is going to be a long travel day. So we recommend flying in a day early. This is even more important right now in 2022 because let's be honest, there's a lot of flight cancellations and delays. So with airfare and potential extra hotel stays, you want to make sure to include that in your budget. One bright side is that many cruise lines do offer promotions that include lodging and airfare. You can also check with your travel agent to see if there's any promotional offers that include both land and sea portions of the trip. Booking directly with the cruise line does offer some peace of mind in case of air delays, as the ship usually waits for you, or the cruise lines will find you alternative flights to ensure you get there on time. Now we can speak from firsthand experience as we have purchased flights through several cruise lines during 2021 and 2022, and we're glad we did. Once you've picked the perfect cruise line and you have your itinerary set, now it comes to the fun part, picking your shore excursions and tours. And just like everything else in Alaska, shore excursions aren't cheap. 
While cruise fares to Alaska are twice as much if not more than Caribbean cruises, the shore excursions too can cost you a pretty penny. This is especially true if you want to book some of those once in a lifetime opportunities. Things such as helicopter tours or walking on glaciers, these can come in at five, six, seven hundred dollars a person for a few hour tour. Other tours like float planes, wildlife tours, zip lining, dog sledding are amazing experiences that you can really only get in Alaska, but they're also pretty expensive too. Now you should have a game plan for every port of call. The good news is there's some ports of call where you really don't even need to plan a tour. You could easily spend time walking around downtown Ketchikan or through Creek Street or exploring all that Juno has to offer or finding a cheap and easy way to get to Mendenhall Glacier. Either way, you should have a game plan for each port of call. And this often means reserving your shore excursions early. And we mean many months in advance. In our experience, shore excursions do book up quickly. So please do not wait to book on board the ship, especially for some of those prize once in a lifetime opportunities. There just won't be any spaces available. The last thing you want to hear about this trip that you've been planning for a while is that the tour or the excursion you want to do is already sold out. Another benefit of booking directly with the cruise line is that it's much easier to cancel tours and shore excursions. Plus, you can also routinely check your cruise planner pre-cruise. So if you purchase a shore excursion at one price and it goes on sale, it's usually easy to cancel and rebook the tour at the lower rate. Now, during your planning, you should investigate local tour providers and third-party tour vendors like Shore Excursion Group or Viator, as they often offer small group tours. However, in Alaska, you may find that many of the options are the same, and sometimes pricing isn't much different. So Alaska is one rare instance where booking your Shore Excursions through the cruise line might make the most sense, especially if this is your first cruise. Now, while cruises are a great value, there are a lot of things on the ship that aren't necessarily included. And this goes for most contemporary cruise lines. And you should take some time getting familiar with exactly what your cruise line offers in its cruise fare and what will cost you extra. If there are some things you must have that you know will cost you extra, it's always best to pre-book them before the trip. Making any onboard purchases pre-cruise is one easy way to save some money. Now, what are some of these add-ons? They could be things such as Wi-Fi, discounted beverage packages, specialty dining, now, if you book something like My Time Dining or a more flexible dining option, many cruise lines let you make your reservations pre-cruise. Of course, if you plan to eat at specialty restaurants, you'll want to pre-reserve those as well. Prime dining times do fill up. Now, some cruise lines offer signature entertainment that you can also book. However, our experience is from 2021 and cruising right now in 2022 is that most cruise lines that offer this option are not allowing you to pre-book entertainment and shows until you board the ship. But we suggest you routinely check your cruise planner pre-cruise in case you are able to pre-book. This will save you time once on board and ensure you get the optimal show times. Packing for Alaska cruise isn't an art, it's a science. And the one thing you cannot forget to pack are layers. Now, of course, the time of year will dictate some of the conditions such as temperatures, but there are usually huge fluctuations in temperatures. With our own experiences, the temperature can change easily 30 degrees in one day. So you'll need plenty of clothes in varying degrees of warmth. Layers that can be easily packed and taken on and off during the day are preferable. Lightweight packable coats or vests or additional layers are necessary in Alaska. You also need to consider the type of shore excursions you plan on doing. Don't be surprised if you need an extra suitcase because we always end up going with at least three suitcases when we travel to Alaska. It doesn't matter when you go to Alaska, it will rain. So make sure to bring a packable raincoat and some waterproof shoes or boots. If you're lucky, the rain will only pop up here and there. But Ketchikan is one of the rainiest places in the United States after all. Plus, even if the day starts off sunny, you need to be prepared for some fog and rain to roll in eventually. Now, of course, don't let the damp weather impact your trip. Just be prepared with the right gear. But don't forget this is a cruise. So there are plenty of other items that you would normally pack for a cruise that you should bring with you. For example, a bathing suit. The pools and hot tubs on your cruise ship will be open. And oftentimes there's a spa or thermal suite you can check out. You might even get lucky enough with warm weather to enjoy the outdoor pools, which has happened to us a day or two during our past Alaska cruises. Now most individuals have cell phones that take pretty good pictures, but if you do have a camera, Alaska Cruise is one trip that you should probably take it. In fact, last year I rented a couple lenses for our Sony Alpha and I'm so glad we did. 
You may also want to invest in some binoculars because sometimes those animal sightings aren't as close as you would think. While packing, make sure to avoid several items that you should not be putting in your suitcase. Check your Cruise Line's website for a list of these items. Before your trip, download your Cruise Line's app. Almost every single Cruise Line has an app for your smartphone. The app will include the daily list of activities. Depending on the Cruise Line, apps also allow you to book different experiences, order food, even open your stateroom door. Having the app on your phone is a huge time saver and it ensures that you have all the information about your ship or your itinerary right in your pocket. Perhaps one of the best benefits of having the app is you're able to do the pre-cruise check-in right on your phone. This way you can skip many of the lines on embarkation day. Want to do your check-in as early as possible because in 2022, many cruise lines are adhering to assigned embarkation times. This allows the cruise lines to reduce crowding at the terminal. So you should stick to this arrival window. Now we can admit that we have arrived early for some of our cruises in the past. Though each cruise line has a different policy for early arrivals, if you do arrive earlier than your assigned embarkation time, don't be surprised if the cruise line makes you wait to board the ship. There's no guarantee if you arrive early that you'll be allowed to check in. That is why it is even more important now to complete the pre-cruise check-in early. That way you get the best embarkation times possible. During your Alaska cruise, most cruise lines offer a variety of onboard talks and lectures. Now, these are not your typical port shopping presentations, although some cruise lines still do have those in Alaska. Rather, these enrichment programs provide valuable information about the history, culture, and wildlife of the ports of call you'll be visiting. These talks are informative, fun, and educational part of your cruise, and we never miss them. Cruise lines often have a variety of different experts, from cultural experts, naturalists, historians, and academics. These programs cover a wide variety of topics and make your cruise much more enjoyable. For example, if your ship is cruising through Glacier Bay National Park, a park ranger will actually come on board the cruise ship. This park ranger will offer a narration as you pass through several glaciers and then later on host informational sessions telling about the history of the park as well as other features of Alaska. It is true that your cruise ship includes a variety of complimentary dining options. And oftentimes cruise lines will also include locally inspired meals at the main dining room. You're traveling to Alaska to eat the local cuisine. We highly suggest that you do so off the ship. Some of our suggestions include salmon bakes, as well as dining on Alaska King Crab, which are just some of the specialties that you should sample during your trip. Of course, you'll need some beverages to wash down the food as well. Yes, there are some of the more popular tourist spots like the Red Dog Saloon or Tracy's King Crab Shack. And we've dined at both of them, and we quite enjoyed the food at both restaurants, as well as the fun and lively atmosphere. There's also the Red Onion Saloon in Skagway, which has its own sorted pass, which is well worth a visit and a drink. In Ketchikan, you can also find other popular venues on Creek Street. If you travel all the way up to Alaska, don't rely just on the cruise line to provide you what they consider to be local cuisine. There are plenty of great places ashore that aren't too far from your cruise ship, that offer fresher, more authentic Alaskan dishes than the cruise line. Now, a lot of people don't talk about this, but during Alaska cruise, you're going to do and see a lot, which means you need to get some sleep. There'll be plenty of early morning calls into your port and glacier sightings that will have you up at dawn. And during the middle of the summer, the sun doesn't set until 10 p.m. So you're gonna be tempted to stay up even later to take in all of the majestic views. And even sometimes of year, there's a the potential to see the Northern Lights. These early mornings and late evenings mean you should make the most of your downtime to squeeze in a few extra hours of shut-eye whenever you can. And if that's not your style, most cruise ships offer venues that serve coffee 24 seven, so you can stay fully awake and charge during your entire voyage. With so much uncertainty and the evolving COVID status, our final Alaska cruise tip for 2022 is to be flexible. The cruise lines are doing all they can to keep guests and crew safe. Unfortunately, sometimes this means making last minute changes to your cruise vacation. Whether it's a newly implemented pre-cruise requirement, a new onboard protocol, changes to the onboard offerings, a change in itinerary, or other disruptions, just try to go with the flow. After all, you are going on an Alaska cruise, so make the most of it. Have an amazing trip. One huge cruise tip we have for individuals is to make sure to plan your cruise early. So if you're watching this video right now and you can't cruise to Alaska this year, 
you can always start planning a cruise for 2023. Alaska cruise itineraries go on sale up to two years in advance. By booking early, you're gonna score one of the cheapest rates and get the best selections of cabins. Now, pre-COVID, we always made sure to book our cruises a year in advance, especially for desirable regions like Alaska or brand new ships. In our experiences, we've only seen cruise rates increase as it gets closer to the sailing date. In the rare instances that prices go down, you can often get a price adjustment. Booking early also allows you to take advantage of some other promotions and perks where you might get additional inclusions, such as free Wi-Fi or free drink packages, which will ultimately save you money. If nothing else, having a cruise booked in advance always gives you something to look forward to, giving you even more time to plan the perfect trip. And there you have it. That's our 20 must-know Alaska cruise tips and tricks for the 2022 Alaska cruise season. But of course, we'd love to hear from you. If you've sailed to Alaska and have some tips, please share them with us in the comment section below. I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise. And if you enjoyed this video, then we suggest you check out our most comprehensive guide yet to Alaska cruises. This detailed look at the best Alaska cruises includes several of the brand new ships sailing the region, as well as some of the top ships as rated by frequent cruisers, not to mention some of our personal favorites. It's the perfect video to help you plan the most amazing Alaska cruise this year.